Hey guys, News Now South Florida here. So today I was thinking I would bucket up some stuff given the impending food shortages and impending supply chain issues and all of that. So as you can see, we've got uh, some corn flour and all purpose flour over here. We'll throw into one of these buckets, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, these are just tractor supply buckets. We'll go over those in a little bit. And I've got some rice. These are two 25 pounds. They're, that's 20 pound bag and a five pound bag. Mylar bags, uh, oxygen absorbers. I got a uh, the wife's straightening iron, I think it's called. And I'll use that to seal up the poly mylar bags. And then I've got some spices. We'll look at those a little closer later. Uh, food fatigue is obviously a real thing. And if I'm gonna be cooking 50 pounds of rice, I'm gonna want some different uh, flavors in it for sure. Obviously with the canned meats and everything else, but that's another video. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up the first bucket. We'll get started and I'll be right back with you all. So I got one bucket filled in. I'm doing the other one right now. Just thought I'd put that on film for you. Nothing special, just cutting a hole in the bag, dumping it in. Now, the amount of sanitation or sanitary practices that you're gonna use in this process is kind of up to you. I figure this rice is gonna boil for 20-ish minutes when I cook it, so I'm not wearing gloves. Uh, some people would, you know, it's up to you. Some people might also freeze the rice for a day or two before and then lay it out. You don't want to put it in right away after freezing it, obviously because of condensation, but some people might want to freeze it or even cook it. I don't know. I've got jars of rice that I made. I'll grab one here in a second to show you. They're right here in the cupboard. I've got jars of rice that I made a few years ago that I ended up cooking in the in the jar. Let me show you. Here's one here. So you got, I made it uh, July of 19, and I ended up cooking the jar for like an hour at a low temp, and then I put the rice in it and cooked it for another hour and a half at a low temp, and then I, I sealed it, and it, you know, it canned it, so... That's a good way too, I don't know. I'm doing buckets today. So we're at a point now where we're gonna just kinda make that flat and even. I already got the iron. I've seen other people use an actual clothes iron, clothing iron. But so I just get this lined up nice and straight like so. And I'll just kind of tack weld it, if you will. <clears throat> Maybe 10 or so seconds in each spot. So now it's tack welded there. I'll kind of go halfway between the end and here. And spot weld it, tack weld it. I'm not sure if I'm using the right language. I'm not a welder. Oops. And because this bag, this Mylar bag, is some sort of poly plasticky poly whatever it is it melts back together and seals right up I'm gonna leave a couple openings so I can drop some oxygen absorbers in that's the style I usually do is I'll leave these two middle ones open and I'll drop in some uh, oxygen absorbers you'll have to excuse my voice and throat I'm in sick all weekend so now I'll do the end here and I'll do the other end, and I'll drop some oxys in. All right, here we are, about ready to throw some oxygen absorbers in. This is sealed up real good. Holy crap. Okay. So I'm gonna drop, you gotta do this pretty quickly. You don't want your oxygen absorbers to, you know, to uh, absorb any oxygen. So I've got two 
um, two thousands. I'm gonna put one one thousand in each bag. And I've got a whole bunch of these little one hundreds that I've had forever. I'm just gonna drop a few in each one. Why not? And then I'm gonna seal up the rest of the bag. Of course, I have to hurry now because I made the mistake of not spot welding the first the first bucket over here on the floor. So I'm gonna pop this hole, close up this one. And I don't wanna close the second one up yet. <clears throat> and I've done this about, I'd say half the time that I make bags. I've accidentally sealed up all of it before trying to press out the air. No joke, I've probably done it half of the time. I've gone, and then I had to cut a little hole in it, press out the air, it's a pain. Try to remember to do this before you seal up that last hole. So that's most of the air out now. And then I'm just gonna get to a better angle here. Seal up this last little hole. And then by tomorrow, this thing will look, uh, you know, like all the oxygen is completely gone out of this bag. Let me get this sealed up and I'll aim it your way. Should be good. A good way to check if you've sealed it is by pulling on it and seeing if it, yeah, see how it's kind of tight? That means it's probably sealed correctly. And then by tomorrow, this won't be loose at all. I'll show you in the morning what it looks like. But for now, I need to quickly seal up the other one. We're going to let that cool for just a second. <clears throat> this side's pretty hot still. Sorry about my voice, guys. I didn't pick the right day to do this video for you all. And then I'm going to push the air out of this last little hole here. This oxygen absorbers were already in there. Put them in at the same time as the other bucket, even though it wasn't ready. Get that air out. From a better angle here. And then it should do it. <clears throat> Let's just check it real quick. Seems like it's got a good seal. And again, by tomorrow. All of this will be tight. It'll be sucked right in and absorbed right up into there. And I'll show you that in the morning. End this video with the morning shot. So the next thing I'm gonna do is these spices. Let me grab the camera here. Next thing I'm gonna do is these spices. I'm gonna throw them into the uh, vacuum sealer. And this extra space that's up here that you can see here, this extra space will be used to have a variety of some spices so that we don't get too much food fatigue. So we'll be right back with that. All right, so we're about to try to bag up, Mylar bag up this flower that I showed you earlier. You can actually see it in the camera over there. I saved you the hassle of watching me vacuum seal all the spices I'll show you those either later in this video or before tomorrow or I'll show you tomorrow when when I open the bucket so the flour I haven't I've never really done two different things like that I only have these giant mylar bags these five gallons I think I'm gonna cut it in half and put the corn flour in one half and as much of the all-purpose flour in the other half I actually have 10 pounds of corn flour, but 15 pounds of all-purpose. I'm not sure half of this bag will hold all 15 pounds of the all-purpose flour. So let's just see what happens. So I'm going to cut this right down the line.
All right, so I've got the one half that the bottom was already sealed. And then you just watched me in fast motion seal the other half. I think again, the same thing can apply to what I said last time. Uh, this flour is gonna be cooked. Nothing's gonna be eaten straight from this bag. So I'm not worrying about gloves. I'm not worrying about stuff like that. Everything I've seen, they really suggest that you freeze the flour first, but I'm not gonna. So maybe there's some eggs <clears throat> that are in the flour that are maybe gonna hatch into something. I don't know. I'm gonna trust that the I'm gonna trust that the uh, oxygen absorber makes for an environment that is not conducive to whatever hatches or I don't know whatever. So let's pour this corn flour into this bag and see what we get. I should have had all of this done already because my oxygen absorbers, I would really like to seal up that jar again, but it is what it is. I'm out in the man cave doing this today. I strongly suggest if you have a wife that you not do bags of flour in the kitchen like this because it can make a mess. Oh no, I don't really need the bucket yet, but let's see what happens here. I'm afraid this, I need to get rid of the bucket actually. Ah, get out of the bucket. Let's do this on the table for now. There's one bag of the corn flour. And I think this is easily gonna fit the two bags of corn flour. It's gonna be real close whether or not this will fit three bags of the all-purpose flour. So as you can see, it's not even half full. Put the second one in here. Those suckers are sealed up pretty good. All right, so I'm willing to bet now I'll put some good money on it that I'm only going to be able to get two bags of the flour. You can see it's is just big enough for the 10 pounds. So that's cool. We'll put that one over here. And we'll get the other one. We'll get the all-purpose flour going. <clears throat> the reason I'm uh, bagging up flour is because, quite frankly, with this stuff going on in other countries I don't want to say any key words for YouTube here um, obviously there's gonna be shortages of stuff and looking like uh, wheat is gonna be the first one you know, with, with those two countries exporting as much wheat as they do or did I should say as much as they did because they're not exporting anything right now to us at least Oh, this one's got a little mess here. All right. Let's just get that going there. And then there you have it. You got this just about perfect amount filled, I'd say. So I'll spot weld these up and put some oxygen absorbers in just like I did the rice and then I'll put them both kind of side by side in a bucket and I'll show you that when it's done. All right you guys can see here I've got uh, the corn flour I wrote on it 10 pounds May 22. <clears throat> the all-purpose flour same on this side should have planned that ahead. I'm gonna throw some oxygen absorbers in here and I'm gonna close up those last two holes. I did this the exact same way that I do the larger rice bags and uh, 
These uh, little 100 absorbers that I have, they're kind of old. I think normally I would probably put 500. So maybe I'll put, I don't know, seven or eight of them. There's four. Just because I'm not 100% confident in how good they are. It shouldn't be that bad, but I don't want to use a 2000 and waste it, that's for sure. So I'll get, I'll dig out a few. Let's see, two, four, five, six. Let's go with eight. We'll go with eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll show you in the morning if they, uh, if they sealed up well or not. Oops, I had this, uh, I had this bag sitting on the, the iron, but I think it's good. <laughs> that was bad. All right, so I'm gonna seal these up, and uh, I guess while I'm doing that, let me show you this real quick. I ran inside while we were paused, and I grabbed some jars. Just like the rice jars that I showed you, I actually have, I did the exact same process with flour. So I've got all purpose flour from May of two years ago. And if you look at this, you can see it's just, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's been in there for two years, sitting in the pantry in the house. And I've got corn flour. I did the exact same way, same day, probably May of, May of 20. And you can see it's nice and powdery still. There doesn't seem to be any bugs or anything. And I actually did some bread flour too, but I think that stuff's in the back of the pantry, so I didn't dig one out for you to see. Maybe I'll do a video, make some more jars in case people want to do that instead. And it's a resource you might have. People, people might already have canning jars. Oh, you see that? Look what I did. <laughs> Remember I said about 50% of the time I forget to squeeze the air out? I forgot to squeeze the air out. All right, so let's use that as a learning experience. So where's my scissors? Right here. So I guess I'll, uh, I'll find the lowest mark of where it was melted, right about here. And I'll pop a small hole in it right about there. 50% <laughs> of the time. There we go. And then I'll squeeze the air out. Realistically, with eight oxygen absorbers in here, it probably would have been fine. But, and I'll melt it again, right there. I've done that a lot of times. All right. So there's that one. We'll throw it in the bucket. I'll show you that in a second. Seal up one of these. And then we won't seal up this one until I get the air out. I'm not sure why I have such a brain fart on that. <clears throat> it's pretty funny though. This one actually doesn't have very much air. You see a little bit of flour coming out of this one. This all-purpose flour is obviously a lot lighter than the corn flour. And there we have it. Ten pounds of flour all-purpose, ten pounds of corn flour. Really, I could probably fit something else in this bucket. I might try to tomorrow find something else because I've got a little bit of space, quite a bit of space, really, if you look at it in there. This actually reminds me of a cool bucket I made not too long ago. Let me show you that one where I cut a bags. So we were having at our local grocery store some sales on cereal. And being that wheat, I think, is one of the first products that's going to be very difficult to get, 
I went and bought a bunch of cereal. This one happens to be Cheerios that are blueberry flavored. Didn't even know that existed. And you can see that it's been completely vacuum sealed. That's in with some Cheerios that are chocolate peanut butter flavored. Also didn't know those existed until I saw these. And then in that same bucket, I've got some powdered milk of various kinds. And the, I don't know, it's kind of like a, a breakfast bucket. But I did it the exact same way as that flour. I cut one bag in half, threw some mylar, or some oxygen absorbers in with each of them. Let's see, now I gotta play Tetris to figure out how these get in there. Do that. And then, what I'm gonna end up doing is finding something to put in with this flour. I'm not sure what yet, but what I'll end up doing with the rice is all of these seasonings. Let's talk about these for a second. And I'll just throw them right in the top. I'll do it right now with this one. And then tomorrow morning, I'll come out and open this up and show it to you. So in here I've got some, I should have labeled these, huh? Let's see. Let's go over the ones I know first. Uh, minced dried garlic. And I just vacuum sealed it and it's in there and I'll start in the top. I believe that's probably garlic powder. Garlic salt or powder, I'm not sure which. This for sure is tomato bouillon. I didn't know that existed until I went to uh, Walmart the other day. And it was in with the other bouillons. And I figure since the wife is Puerto Rican and she always puts tomato paste or tomato sauce in with her rice. She'd like that. This for sure, I know this, to, this is chili powder. I threw some chili powder on the floor just now. Some salt. Make sure you get iodized. And then, again, the wife is Puerto Rican, so we got some sazon. And I'm guessing this must therefore be uh, complete seasoning. Sazon completes which is this stuff. If you guys have never used this on anything, man, it's pretty good. And what else have we got? I don't know what this is. I'm going to say this might be, this is probably beef bouillon. Again, from the Walmart. It's this bouillon, giant, giant jar of beef bouillon. And I might be able to fit one or two more spices in there. I'm sorry I had to get my chili powder that I dropped. But as you can see, that pretty much loads this bucket right up, and then we're good. <clears throat> and I'll throw a lid on it. I've already labeled them, as you can see here on the dates. Rice, 25 pounds, May 22. I didn't get the lids that have the, the rubber seal in them. I don't know. Should I? Probably. It probably would be better, but whatever. The bucket's five bucks a tractor supply. This is probably a buck and a half or two bucks a tractor supply. And then I may or may not write it wrong along the top. I don't know. So then tomorrow, I guess I'll show you what these look like. You know what? I don't think there's a need for that because I already have one right here. This was January of 22, and you can see, I'm gonna get close to the camera here, that it is completely vacuum sealed. And this is, I have this bucket out because I have those extra spices I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna fill this one with spices like I just did for the other one. And you can see that's what the bag will end up looking like, completely sealed. That'll last you at least 20, 25 years, no problem. Hopefully we won't need it before that, but hopefully we'll still have it when we do need it. So there you go, guys. Uh, get out there and get out there and get yourself some rice, some wheat products, flour, cereal, stuff like that, canned goods. Get it going and get it happening. I've got a bunch of these rice and jars. I'll do a video with the jars next time. We'll see you guys next time.